Hey, Shalom, Shalom, Yasha Allah, peace Israel. First and foremost, we're going to start off by giving all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bashem, Yahweh Shah, Bashem, Rakak, Kodas, Gabalan, Sah, Apostles, Elders, and Green Millstone, the men that taught us this truth through the Spirit. Peace and blessings to the elect of the house of Israel scattered throughout the four quarters of the earth. And, you know, we just wrapped up camp, but you know, the Spirit is still burning on brothers. So, you know, hit the button. The button. Hit the button, man. Yeah, you know, waste the spirit that the Lord pours upon you to just chit chat. <laughs> you can feed brothers, you can yeah. feed the flock and the congregation with that spirit that's still on you. You know what I mean? And that is our purpose. That is our job to feed the flock. You had something? Yeah, yeah, I had something. Okay. So just bear with me. When I mean that, it's something that came out of camp about my side. And I you know, thought about it. Everything's in the spirit of Yahweh Bashi, Yahweh So I'm going to start with this, but I got the other piece of my mind. Revelations 11 and 1. And it was, a, it was giving me a read like unto a rod. And the angel stood saying, Bread on rise and measure the temple of the Most High. And the altar and them that worship therein. Whatever you want to time it. If you want to time it for me, yeah, yeah. it says, But the court without is the court which is without the temple, leave out and measure it not, for it's given unto the Gentiles. So showing you in the kingdom of heaven, there's gonna be a separation. You know, contrary to popular belief, you know, the Christian church and the different schools of thought that falls under the disguise of Jesus the Christ teaches universalism, right? One, one, one centered around one people, humanity. But the Bible teaches about nations, right? The Bible teaches about um, separation. It doesn't teach about inclusiveness. That's what the world teaches, but that's not what the Bible teaches. So in the kingdom of heaven, there's going to be a court. That's going to be outside of the temple or the holy place, right? Which is the land of Israel. And that court is designated for the heathen nations. The designation is for the people that's not belonging to the heavenly father and the son, right? Because when you go back to Genesis, the 10th chapter, the Lord divided the nations, right? But his portion was his people, which are the Israelites contrary to popular belief. And the Israelites today are you so-called blacks, Latinos, and Native Americans that's scattered throughout the four corners of the earth. You got it out. Right, right. So it says, in the holy city shall shall no, sorry, shall they tried on the foot forty and two months, which is a period of time. So <clears throat> I was going was going over this. So everything the brother said was absolutely right. So now when you go into the history, Ezra's for and one. Now when the adversaries of Judah and Benjamin heard that the children of the captivity built the temple unto the Lord, Yahweh of Israel, then they came to Zerubbabel and the chief of the fathers and said unto them, Let us build with you, for we seek your God as you do. We do sacrifice unto him, unto him since the days of Ishdan, Ish the king of Ashur, which Brought us up hither, but Zerubbabel and Joshua, and the rest of the chief of the fathers of Israel said unto them, You have nothing to do with us to build and house unto our power, but we ourselves together will build unto the Lord Yahweh by Shemiah as the king Cyrus, the king of the Persia, have commanded us. So the the the, the I not the idea, but so what are we doing right now? We're building a spiritual house. Right. That spiritual house consists of Judah, Benjamin, Levi, and all the 12 tribes. We don't need no outside forces to come and try to build something to the Lord. Right. You know? So that's something that happened in the history of Israel, and it happened again by the time of King Masha and so forth. That's what the scripture says about Peter, that the, um, the gates of hell should not prevail. All right. So when we go back to 
there's a reason why I brought this up. So go back to Revelation 11 and 1. It was a reed that was given to me a reed unto a rod. That reed unto a rod. The measurement stick is the scriptures. All right. The scriptures is measuring the people of the Lord. Judging the people of the Lord. So even in that sense of how the Christians believe. Man, this fish, this is in everywhere. Mm -hmm. this, you know how I that shit is? Mm -hmm. <laughs> but it's like, yeah, something that i seen as around my way. So the measuring stick is the Lord's measuring stick, which is the scriptures. This is what we go by. And then even in that sense shows that none of these heathens can ever come near our holy place. Our holy place. Yeah. So even so even to this point right now in Babylon the Great, there's a there's a separation showing that we don't need nobody else involvement for this building that we have we've been building. Right. Alright? And I got um since I said that Give me um Daniels two and forty four. Oh good 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 good. Daniels I got a quick one for you. So, no, can you do your thing? I get the scriptures. Okay. Daniel's 2, 44. In the days of these kings, shall the Most High of Heaven set up a kingdom. So then in the days of these kings, what kings is that talking about? The kings of the heathen nations. Because at one point in time, every nation had an opportunity to rule the planet Earth. Yes. So you can't say that the Most High wasn't merciful. Yes. Or that, you know, he's not fair, so to speak, mm -hmm. right? Because the nations had their time to rule. Go ahead. Shall the... Um, sorry. You start from the time. Cut. In the days of these kings shall the, shall the Most High have of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed. So he's going to set up a kingdom during the time of the other kings. And that's what we're witnessing right now. Right. Remember, the kingdom of heaven is within you. Right. Who, yeah, I was going to get that. Who are you? <laughs> yeah, put that... You know, bookmarking. Who who are we? Yasha Allah. Princes of the power. We are princes of God. Right? So the kingdom is being built during the time of these other kingdoms ruling. Yep. Right? Go ahead. And the kingdom shall not be left to other people. And this kingdom that shall never be destroyed will not be left to other people. That is, that is the point. Yeah. So where is this inclusiveness or right. universalness or humanity doctrine coming from? Right, right. Which goes to show it. Either the scriptures contradict each other or somebody's a liar. And it comes by process of elimination. The Christian church, the Roman Catholic church. In all these different schools of thoughts that falls under the disguise of Jesus the Christ has been found to be liars. Okay? Right. Yeah, read that part again. Con, it says, And the kingdom shall not be left to other people, but shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms, and it shall stand forever. Where is this God so loved the world at? Where is the love at? If this one kingdom... That never is going to be destroyed is going to break these other kingdoms, right? Because this one kingdom is under the rulership of who the world ignorantly calls Jesus the Christ, but his real name in the Hebrew tongue is Yahusha or Mashiach, right? This one kingdom under that man's rulership is going to break up the rest of the kingdoms, and that's what the second coming is. Yep, that's what the second coming is. Which it ain't no roses and flowers and kissing babies and people disappearing and ended up in the cloud. No, the second coming is the Lord of Lord, the King of Kings, breaking the other nations, non-Israelites. Yeah, that was it? Yeah. Daniel 7 and 18, since you said that. Mm -hmm. But the saints of the Most High shall take the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever, even forever and ever. So the saints... Who are the saints? Let's get that. Psalms 50. I use this one. Mm hmm And get Psalms 50 and 5. Yeah, well, 50 and 3. No, yeah, 50 and 5. I'm saying. Psalms 50 and 5. It says, Gather my saints together unto me, 
those that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. Yeah, gather my saints together unto me. So who are the saints? The ones that made a covenant with the Heavenly Father. Who made a covenant with the Heavenly Father by the way of sacrifice? The Israelites. All right, point blank period. It says Psalms 148 and 13. Let the praise of the let them praise the name of the Lord from his for his name alone is excellency. His excellence, sorry. His glory is above the earth and the heaven. He also exalt the horn of his people, the praise of all his saints, even the children of Israel, a, a people near unto him, praise ye the Lord. The praise of all his saints, even the children of Israel. So the saints are synonymous with the sons of Israel. So when it says the saints of the kingdom, I mean, get it again, Daniel 7, 18. Daniel's, I have to pass that. Okay, I'll get that. Mm -hmm. He's the other app. Fine. Daniel 7 and 18. Well, I mean, we, know, we know about heart. <laughs> but I'll read it anyway. It says, But the saints of the Most High shall take the kingdom. The saints, the Israelites, shall take the kingdom. So when you see the word saints, know that it's talking about Israelites according to the two precepts that we just read. They're going to take, take, the kingdom yeah. from who the other nations and who is an Israelite from the tribe of Judah right the conquering lining from the tribe of Judah Yahweh Shah who the word eagerly called Jesus the Christ so Yahweh Shah and his people are going to take the kingdom God and possess the kingdom forever even forever and ever they're going to possess the kingdom age after age after age every lifetime forever and that's what the everlasting life and eternal life comes into play. Because he's going to rule forever. Okay? Isaiah 45 and 17. But Israel shall be saved in the Lord with, ever, with an everlasting salvation. Come on now. You shall not be ashamed nor confounded world without end. You got it. Yeah, so no. What the brother's saying. So it's a world without end, meaning age without end. This is why we don't need you to help build up anything because we're already built in the spirit. All right. The Lord is the one that's building this up. The scripture did not say, well, matter of fact, let me get this real quick. Um, Ezekiel 37 and 16. It said, no, I'm sorry. 37 and 12. I started at 12. Therefore prophesy, say unto them, thus saith the Lord, behold, I... Behold, my people, I will open up your graves camera ahead. and cause you to come out of your grave and bring you into the land of Israel. And you shall know that I am the Lord when I have opened your graves, O my people, and brought you up out of the graves. So I, God Allah kept saying graves. Let me look up the word grave. Mm -hmm. Which we know what graves is, but I just want to, I'm, I just play dumb. Nah, this is for the viewers, bro. Yeah, no, I just like saying that because mm -hmm. the Hebrew word is korab. Uh, oh, yeah, korab. Grave, septica, tomb. So coming from a dead state, all right? The Lord is awakening us out of our dead state, which if you go back into Revelations 11, when you on down on 8, it speaks of what? Matter of fact, let me get that. Well, I got to come back to that quick. Revelations 11 and 8. It says, and their dead bodies shall lie in the great street of, I mean, and their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which is spiritually called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. So that great city is what? America. All right? America, what it, what it says in Baruch, the dead Israelites. So this is where the dead Israelites living, they walking, talking, but they spiritually dead. So the Lord opened up our grave, opened up. <clears throat> And give us back what? Our identity. And this is the beginning of, of the downfall of these, these heathens. All right? That's why we go back to Ezekiel because there's something else I wanted to read. And it says, matter of fact, I was supposed to read up. Bro. Yeah, 10. And it says, um, 9. Ezekiel 37 and 9. Then said he unto me, prophesied unto the winds, prophesy, son of man, and say to the winds, to the wind, Thus saith the Lord, Yahweh, come forth, come from the four winds and breathe 
and sorry and breathe and breath upon these slain that that they may live so i prophesied so so i prophesied as he commanded me and breathe I mean, and breath came into them and they lived and stood upon their feet in a great exceeding and i'm sorry in an exceeding great army so we standing up upon our feet now we know who we are the mission is accomplished and now the Lord is building us up every day. All right. So we don't need Esau or these other nations. We don't need your uh, 501 3C charter. We don't need your, your financial aid or any any sort of worldly things right. to push this word. Right. Because the Lord gave us something that you can't give us. He gave us the breath of life, mm -hmm. which is the knowledge and wisdom and understanding of him. This is why... Our forefathers said, we don't need you. Mm -hmm. We don't need you. We don't need your other nations. We don't need Moab. We don't need Ammon. We don't need Elam. We don't need Ham. We sure don't need, sure damn don't need no Edomite to tell us anything about our history, who we are, all right? And the thing about our who we are as a people is it's still a, it's still a mystery because it's spiritual. That's what the scripture says, what? Um, the spirit bear witness with our spirit. Mm -hmm. So there's a so there's there's a witness that you can't see. That same that yeah, these are the people. Right. You know? These are the people. These the, these are the people that is measured by that rod that read and that fits, okay, of who they say they claim they are. So everything is spiritual. Um what was that? Let me get this. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, sir. You done with that? Yeah, yeah. Give me um Baruch four oh. three. You read the whole damn the whole chapter. Yeah, right. Let me start from the top. For Baruch four and one, and it said, "This is the book of the commandments of the Most High, the law that endureth forever. All they that keep it shall come to life, but such as leave it shall die." Mm -hmm. So that in itself right there shows you how, how important the book is to the Lord, to the to the Israelites. Because this is the book of life. This is the one thing that eludes a lot of Israelites because Israelites believe in a in mind that they don't need this book. Yeah. When you read on what Proverbs 1 and 1 on down it tells you this is the instruction. Instruction of what? How to live. How to be alive, not dead. All right, and it says, verse two: Turn thee, O Jacob, take hold of it. Walk in the in the presence of light thereof, that thou mayest be illuminated. You want to go into that? Nope. Yeah, keep going. No, it says, um, First, Second Corinthians four and, and three about the light of Yahweh Shai that's within us. Right. So we're illuminated by this book because we devoured, we ate this book. So not light emanates from brothers because we're illuminated. Right. I mean, we have to say we're the true illuminated ones. Right. Because we have the true knowledge and wisdom of the sin of Yahweh about Shemiah It says, give not that honor to another. Ecclesiastes 8 and 1 says, wisdom makes a man's face to shine. Yep, yep. So brothers are shining. Shining. And Yahweh Shah said a parable that let your light shine before the world. What is that light? Like the brother said, the knowledge was the man of stand. What is that light? Yahweh Shah. Yep. That's within us. So that's why, you know, it's important that you represent yourself well because you are representing Yahweh Bashib Yahweh Shah in your body. You are representing that light. You are no longer yourself or belong to yourself. You belong to the Heavenly Father and His Son. So you got to conduct yourself like a man that serves the Heavenly Father and His Son. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It says, give not thine honor to another. That was the point I wanted. Give yeah. not thy honor unto another. See what the nations are trying to do. They're trying to take our honor. Yeah. yeah. They're trying to take our virtue. Right? The nerve. Like the brother, you know, started to show off with. They want to build. They want to help build the temple for what? For what? What do you want to help build, you know, 
what do you want to help build our house for? So you, what kind of agenda do you have? You know, and we don't need you to build our home. The Lord gave us everything we need to build the kingdom of heaven. Because we are the building, right? We are the lively stones that each brother is a brick of the, of the temple of the Lord, of the house of the Lord. Right. We're the church. We're the body, right? It's all poetry, parabolic talk, right? So it says, give not your honor unto another. So you got Christians, black Christians, black, black. Christians that want to include Esau or Edom into their into their heritage yeah, or into yeah. their honor. Yeah. Right? You want to include humanity into what was given into you. But they don't want to include you on what was given onto them. Yeah, yeah. Look at this world now, right? They don't they don't let blacks, Latinos, and Native Americans pass a certain threshold, right? They gatekeep things. They put ceilings over you that you could never surpass what they don't want you to surpass. But you got our people on the other side of that that want to include Esau into everything. Right? Can I continue that? And it says, nor the things that are, that are profitable unto thee to a strange nation. Yeah, what is profitable unto us? The kingdom of heaven. Yeah. The, the scriptures, the Lord's statutes and commandments. He said, I gave this to you so you could be holy. So you could be separate from the other nations. So you could be better than the other nations. Not to be equaled. Thank you. Because if you're equaled, right, then well, you send it, you send it to me, the chart of how the riches of each yeah, nationality. Na nationality in America... And why is blacks, Latinos, and Native Americans in the bottom of everything? Thank you. But all men are created all, equal. You know, so it doesn't. No Add man, up. no man is equal to another man. Thank you. Period. So that's that. In, that in itself is a false statement. Right. But the reason why they do that for the is the, the trickery mm -hmm. of the devil is that they bring in mass confusion amongst the people. Right. And they they keep themselves. So called separate from everybody else. Right. They feed that bullshit to you. Yeah. They don't believe that shit. Yeah. They feed you that shit. Yeah. So you can believe it. And it's not true. Yeah. It's evident. You can see with your five senses. Right? See, touch, hear, feel, taste. You can see that we're not equal. We're not playing on the same playing field. No, I never have. But they continue to push that lie on you. Right. And put deceive you to put you to sleep. That's why they have people to sell out and people to sit there and try to sell you. Oh, you yeah. gotta work hard and do this and nah. That's that all racism that, ain't real. Yeah, that all that shit is is um, a lie because the simple fact is you gotta know somebody in order to get anything in this world. Mm -hmm. So that if you don't know nobody, you're not gonna get nothing close. All right, and the nepotism in this world runs rapid. So. In the kingdom of heaven, you got damn right you're gonna have nepotism. Mm -hmm. All right, that's what this whole this whole thing about is about superiority over others. It's not about equal equal to. That's a lie. Mm -hmm. It's all about nations on top of other nations. That's what the scripture says. What? Why did the heathen rage and imagine a vain thing? Because they they in their mind. The scriptures also say, "Why you leap ye o high hills?" If you're trying to leap something, you're trying to go over somebody. So if you're trying to go over somebody, you're not trying to be equal to nobody, all right? But that's the, that's part of the madness that's being spilled to keep you confused and not and not um, see reality the way it is. Right. All right. Which is a deadly thing, you know. That's a that's a wicked philosophy that they're being pushed. It says, um, verse four, O Israel, happy are we. For things that are pleasing to the most are, are made known unto us, which is very important. We have the basic stuff because the Lord gave us the things to appease Him. Mm -hmm. This is how you have to walk. This is how you have to conduct yourself. But it says in uh, Second Peter, the third chapter, about um, was it what holy conversation? A, yeah, what being a man, right? You ought to be in all holy conversation. And holy conversation means 
your lifestyle, how you're supposed to live. Mm -hmm. Conduct. How you're supposed to conduct yourself. And what conducts yourself to be is a godly man. This is why we don't need outsiders to come in because they don't know how to be godly. They don't know how to be godly. Because it wasn't given to it them. It wasn't given to them. <laughs> you know? They don't got the key to life. If you got the key to life, how the hell is somebody going to tell you what to do? Thank you. This is our world. Right. They telling us how to con how to to build in our world, medicine, uh, uh um, what do you call it, botany. Uh -huh. All right, how to conduct yourself. We know it naturally. Uh -huh. That's why things flourish with us. But this unnatural way of Esau got us effed up. Yeah, that's what got us messed up because we living like Edomites. We think like Edomites. We dress like Edomites. We joke like Edomites. We fight like Edomites. Everything we do is like Esau. I'm talking about the way of our people in the world. The truth set us free. We free from that, right? But the majority of our people in the world, they still think the way of Esau is the way to live or is normal. Yeah. Because Esau is in power. And they think the ones that are in power is the way to be or the way to live. And it's not because the Lord commanded us to live differently. Commands and demands. I don't care who's in power. I'm your power. Right, right, right. And my and your power told you to keep the commandments and the faith of Mashiach Yahusha. Right. So that's what we're supposed to do, nice. regardless said, yeah. of who's in power and you know what that rulership tells you to do or what's cool, what's not cool. We still got to live by the guidelines that the Lord told us to live by. Right. Since you said that, everything ties in. Proverbs 12 and 26. The righteous is more excellent than his neighbor, but the way of the wicked seduces him. So, okay. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Read it again. Um, Proverbs 12 and 26. The righteous is, is more excellent than his neighbor. The righteous is more excellent than his neighbor. Who is his neighbor? The Edomites. Right? Jacob was not Esau, Jacob's brother, yet I loved Jacob and I hated Esau, right? So the righteous is more excellent than his neighbor, okay? But the way of the wicked seduces them. But the way of the wicked, who is the wicked according to the Bible? The Edomites. Who are the Edomites today? The Caucasian race, all right? So the way of the wicked seduces them. Why? Because... Oh, look, uh, Esau got a suit and tie. He's clean-shaven. He must know what he's talking about. Right, right. He's successful in his world. See, he got a business. Oh, he has real estate. I thought it was a tie. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? They're demons, bro. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, he got, he got a business. Well, he got real estate. He must know what he's talking about. And it's like, yeah, you got to learn from Esau. And from a way, a certain standpoint... You do got to watch and learn from the devil, but you're not supposed to live like the devil. Exactly. You watch and learn from the devil, but you do not live like the devil. Yeah. You understand? There's a difference. Yeah. So the way of the wicked seduces them. So that's that's why Jacob's caught up. That's why they chasing the bag. That's why yeah. they brag about their degrees. Yeah. Because they think they mean something to the most high. Yeah. Or oh, they they think that means something, period. But in the eyes of the Most High, you don't care about your degrees. You don't care about your suit tie. You don't care about your real estate, your investments, your five hundred um, one ks, your accomplishments. He cares about how you glorify Him, how you praise Him, how you worship Him. Okay. Jeremiah nine and twenty three. Thus saith the Lord: Let not the wise man glory in his wisdom. Neither let the mighty man glory in his might. Let not the rich man glory in his riches. But let him that glorieth glory in this, that he understandeth and knoweth me. That's what the Lord takes pleasure in, right? When you look up the meaning of sacrifice, right, or offering, it comes from the Hebrew word, korban. And korban means to draw near to me, right? Mm. So that's why the Lord loved our sacrifices, because it drew us closer to him. That was our connection to him, right? But if you're sitting there bragging about 
your accomplishments and what you can do to somebody and what you've Watch done. The most I don't give a shit about none of that. Right. Because guess what? He gave you the spirit to do those things. Right. You didn't do that on your own. He gifted you that. Right. But he says, if you glory in me and the heavenly father and his son, he takes pleasure in that. He loves that. He, 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 he you know, it makes him happy, man. You know? And that's what it's about. Making the most high happy. And the mo you make the most high happy. He gonna make you happy. That's how it goes, that's man. Exactly, exactly as a goes. as a, a, a wife, uh, a wife to a husband or a pet to an owner. You know why? Why are pets so loyal to their owners, right? Because what you do for them. Oh, he gives me a roof over my head. He feeds me every day. Yeah, I'm a, yeah. The simple things, right? So guess what? I'm gonna give my devotion to him. Yeah. So it's the same thing, man. Yeah. We got to devote ourselves to the Most High, and He's gonna shower us with what we want. You know. Romans eleven and thirty-three. All oh, the depths and the riches of both of the wisdom and knowledge of the Most High. How unsearchable are His judgments and His ways past finding out. You got it. Yeah, because going back the riches. These are the riches that is required. That's why it says in Revelations two and nine. That the Lord knows our works and tribulations, the things that we're going through. How can we be the temple of the Lord and we're going through hell? Because the Lord is building us up to go through these things. Because He's refining us the best, the best way. We are emulating our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai. Since we're emulating Him, we gotta go through the same thing that He went through. And since we're going through the same thing that He's going through, we indulge in Him. All right. Hey, the scripture says what? Your favorite thing. That Yahweh Shai is the bread of life. Oh, yeah. All right. We dining in Yahweh Shai every time we talk about Yahweh Shai. We think of Yahweh Shai. Yeah, you good right here. Okay. Because yeah, it's one lane that's coming together. I got you. So we dining in Yahweh Shai. We're becoming one with Yahweh Shai. It said what? Um, Revelations 3 and 20. I knock up at the door. Right. And I shall sup with him. Right. Supping meaning what? You, you supping, you eating, you eating the scriptures. And this is the riches that we have. All right. This is what makes us rich. Knowing the, what pleases the Lord. Knowing how to conduct ourselves with the Lord's word. Mm -hmm. How to do it, not to abuse the word of the Lord. Right. All right. You have a lot of guys that take the word of the Lord, they take it for granted. Yeah. You know? And when you go to the enemy for AIDS and everything, you're taking the Lord for granted. Lord for granted Like yeah. you know I, Yahweh Shai didn't need The Romans to go to speak To the public side You know word. what I'm saying Yahweh Shai didn't, they didn't He didn't need that Alright He didn't need a platform there You was, know the, um, the, the, the daily news Or you Exactly know, Exactly the New York Post He didn't need Roman times Exactly or, Roman or, times <laughs> or, You know He didn't need uh, 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 the, the newest Roman uh, 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 Talk show you know, the hit Roman talk show yeah, at that yep, time. Yep, yep, yep. Let me go to the to the to the, uh, the, the the new hip Roman talk show, right, so right. I could publicize the word. Right, 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 right. Or let me go to jail, so I could preach the word in jail. Right. The Lord, did, listen. The Lord went where the Lord, where the heavenly Father gave him the spirit to go. Man, that is the key to everything. Now it got me thinking. Well, that got me thinking. But Romans twelve and one. I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of Yahweh, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto the Most High, which is your reasonable service. So we're this is our re, this is the the payment, the exchange. All right, it is a fair exchange. The Lord put His life in the life for us, so we could understand and glory in Him, and by us putting our Everything into him, guess what? This is our reasonable service. It's nothing special to the side of man, but it's special because what? This is a scripture I had in mind the first time. Everything comes to you full circle. <laughs> mm -hmm. First Corinthians 3 and 15, it says, I'm sorry, 16. Know you not that you are the temple of the most high, and that the spirit of the most high dwelleth in you. Alright? So every brother that's out there that's pushing his word, the spirit of the Lord 
dwells within you. You have to carry yourself in a in a godly manner. Yeah. All right. You're not housing any old spirit. That's what these people have. These people out here bugged out. I always bring up the um, what's his name? Uh, Men in Black. Bro. I forgot which one it was, but you, the guy, the alien was on in the man's head and was moving around, but mm. he had to take the face off and see. That's how these demons are on these people. Yep. These people got demons on them. The Lord didn't allow those demons to, 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 to plague, flesh, to plague us. So that means that what? We have the Holy Spirit with us. The guiding us and telling us, something us, giving us a direction. Leading us in the right cause to be the proper brick in the Lord's temple. You know, brothers don't have to go to therapy. Nope. You know, this is the therapeutic. Right. This is the healing um, device that the Lord has to to make to make us better. Right. All right. So we are we are the temple of the Most High. And if any man defile the temple of the Most High, him shall the Most High destroy. For the temple of the Most High is holy, which temple ye are. So that's why you have all these sellouts. What 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 do they do? Every time you hear about all these people that sells out, you still want to go to the spot? Oh uh, yeah, we can go there. All right, Wrap not this up. block, cause this this is go to the next block and you're gonna make a right. Mm -hmm. So we are the temple of the Lord. We're not supposed to defile our temple, but the people of this world they sell out, and part of selling out is defiling their temple. All right, doing ungodly things for riches that that's not gonna do nothing for them. Mm -hmm. All right, so we got we can't take our lives for granted. We gotta see, we gotta do what the the will of the Lord is. All right, in season, out of season, there ain't no freaking camp yeah, camp, camp season. season. That's is all year round. Whatever the Lord, we we need to be available, men. Right, you know. You gotta. We just gotta be available. Just yeah, it never mm -hmm. works, bro. <laughs> Trust me. Okay, we need to be available at all times. Mm -hmm. You know, we you need to to hasten the fact of when you are called. Whatever the Lord tells you, you just do by command. Right. All right. So that was it. Because mm -hmm. we gonna wrap it up anyway, right? Yeah. So let me finish. Get one last script. Um, it's lock here. You want me finish that? Oh yeah, let me finish. Uh, Romans twelve and two. Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is good and acceptable and perfect will of the Most High. So, yeah, you gotta. It's alright. Yeah. Try to make a right here. Mm -hmm. No, actually, go to the next next slide. Exactly. So, be not conformed to this world. Don't be like this world. Be transformed. All right, we're transformed creatures. We're coming from an ungodly state, coming to a godly state. So, since we're coming from a ungod a, a godly state, we must be godly. Mm -hmm. All right. Henceforth, the vessels that the Lord has created all right that's it i'll be there okay, that's okay. That's um nah uh i had something uh, nah that was it that was it all right i'm gonna wrap it up hey man we pray and hope that y'all was edified the water for tuning in we're gonna give all praises honor and glory to yahweh by hashem yahweh shine by hashem rakakadash so next time we say shalom shalom